Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. Today I'm going to show you a new addition to my boondocking power system, the Renogy 40 amp DC to DC battery charger. Uh, off the top, I bought this with my own money. I don't have anything to do with Renogy. Anyway, what it's going to do is on one end, I'm going to run some wiring from my truck battery um, alternator charger all the way on the other end it's going to go into my fifth wheel where my lithium battery bank lives and while I'm going down the road towing along it'll be putting up to 40 amps of uh, charging current into my battery bank which would be pretty sweet if I have uh, low batteries say it's a cloudy day like you know why would you want this you know you've got solar and, and all the rest of it well sometimes we're traveling in conditions where it's cloudy for multiple days and I'm not getting the solar charge so rather than having to yard out the generator to recharge my battery bank I thought it'd be kind of neat to use the trucks alternator while I'm driving along and be putting 40 amps in there you drive three hours there's 120 uh, amp hours back into your battery bank so why would you want this versus um, just the standard tow cable people think well you got a tow cable isn't the truck charging your batteries well they kind of designed that for kind of one little battery and it doesn't really have the the amperage if you if you look at the tow cable the the wiring is quite small so i think at best you may get five five amps or seven amps or something like that um, the other reason is because I have lithium batteries, I can't just run some heavy wire straight to the battery because I could damage my alternator. Just the lithium battery bank can pull a lot of lot of juice. Like that lithium battery bank, it can. Uh, I think the the max is about 300 amps, which can harm an alternator. So this basically sits in between as an isolation, and then the output will will give you the proper charge that your batteries need. Um, right here on this unit there's some dip switches that you adjust and that way you can adjust it for lead acid but this model you can also adjust for lithium and then you can adjust the voltage you want to be charging at. So that is important too because on my truck they have sort of a small a smart alternator and I've noticed that it can vary in voltage as you're going down the road I've seen it putting out 14.3 volts but at other times it'll drop down as far as 13.8 um, I think there was I did a video a little while together where I cobbled together a system and tested out doing the same thing with a, a solar controller I had and it, I kind of met with lukewarm results the best I could get that solar controller to put out was about 19 amps and then if I had been driving any length of time and the alternator had adjusted the, the charging voltage down I was down to 9 amps so this is supposed to actually boost the voltage so on the input side here it can be as low as anywhere from 8 to 16 input but then it's regulated on the output to just what your batteries need so that's the whole idea of having the, the DC to DC charger so here we have a few things we have the, the dip switches to set your voltages um, also, this is a, a, a plug-in for to plug in the temperature uh, compensation sensor. If you have lead acid batteries and they're cold, they need a higher charge rate. I won't need that for lithium. Uh, there's a trigger wire, so you can turn this on and off. And then there's what they call a, a current limiter. Um, in the manual, it says you can limit the output to 50%. I'm not really sure why you, why you would need that. Um, anyway, the trigger wire... Well, my, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably use my uh, running lights to trigger this on and off. And they got some pretty heavy lugs on this side and pretty heavy lugs on this side. So let me go to a little diagram I, I drew up, kind of a little schematic of what I'm going to do, and I'll show you what the manual says about what kind of gauge of wire I'm going to need. Here's a section in the, the Renogy manual showing me what... Uh, size cabling and fusing they recommend so I have there's a 20 amp and a 40 amp and a 60 amp I have the 40 amp so it says to starter battery input um, down here 32 feet that should be about what I'm going to be running it says 4 to 2 gauge so I'm good to go with my existing 4 gauge I've run in the truck and I'll use 4 gauge in from the truck into the front compartment also is a recommended 60 amp fuse 
and then to the house battery output same deal but they recommend a, a 50 amp fuse see the the charger will actually um, take in a higher current than it puts out just because it's boosting the voltage so let's go and look at my sophisticated drawing here of exactly what I'm up to so this is our truck and right at the battery here I'm gonna have a 60 amp terminal fuse I'm also going to use a breaker here so I have the ability just to turn off everything down the line and I'll put a 60 amp uh, switchable breaker right beside the battery then I have my four gauge heavy duty wire running along here up to the access point at the tailgate and I'm going to use an Anderson power pole connector there I was using for the test with the solar controller I had a trolling motor plug but it's only good for 30 amps and like I say once I set this 40 amp charger that's the 40 amp output but the draw off the battery can be over 50 amps so that would be a too too wussy of a connector would get hot so the Anderson connector I got is good to 175 amps so it's actually overkill for the job so then inside the the rig here in the front battery compartment here's my batteries I'm gonna put a 40 amp breaker on the output they suggest 50 amp but I've actually tried the 40 amp and it works it's just working so if I have any problem with it actually popping that breaker then I'll have to buy myself a 50 amp but I just happen to have the 40 amp kicking around to use and there's the DC to DC charger and then I'll also run a trigger wire over into one of my uh, trailer uh, light uh, fixtures so that I can grab 12 volts to trigger it when I turn the truck lights on so let's go ahead, get outside and show you it in real life okay so here's where I have it mounted in my front storage compartment next to my charge converter here and coming in these are the wires coming in from outside connected to the truck that's the input through there and then to the output um, I go straight from the negative right to the, the RV's chassis ground so that'll return to the battery ground wire negative wire and then the positive I've coming out here it's a four gauge goes up and across and it feeds into this breaker here so this is my solar charge controller output it goes into that breaker and then this uh, DC to DC charger go through there then on the bottom I just have it looped over to the existing connection then it goes into my battery bank that has my uh, line energy three line energy 105 amp hour batteries in it and then one more wire is this uh, it's about a I think a 16 gauge wire they recommended for the trigger wire so when 12 volts comes onto that wire it throws a relay in here and clicks it on and off so I have that goes up and over this way um, to the side marker light uh, it's spliced into the 12 volt for the side marker light so that when I turn my marker lights on this thing will click on and I'll just give you a demo of that in action the outside connection I actually reused what was here before was the vent for the lead acid batteries kind of a round screen vent so I just clipped out a few of the veins in there and then I installed found this at a hardware store it's just for mounting an outside light but it was perfect for getting those wires through a small space in there there's a gasket that goes around it and I put some silicone in here just to keep it waterproof and then for the wiring I got a really good quality set of uh, jumper cables I liked it because the wire the wires were uh, connected together so it kind of made it easy and it was uh, relatively inexpensive then like I say I used some uh, Anderson power, power pole connectors that I got on Amazon uh, kind these are Uchen or something and <laughs> kind of a knockoff but they had nice dust covers on them so that was pretty cool and I'll just show you where I mounted it on the truck here right over here get inside there give you a better look
There we go. So I just put a couple screws in there so it's secure. And then it also has the dust cover. You can pull on and off when I'm not using it. And right now, that's where the trolling motor plug is. I'm going to put it back so I can use it for my air compressor. I'm just going to have to go in and wire some different wires into that. But So I'll have, I'll have a plug there, trolling motor plug, and then this plug. So it's going to be pretty easy when we get going. This comes off and that plugs into there like so. Easy peasy. So we'll go show you what I did with the battery end of it. So like I said in a previous video, my Ram truck I elected for an optional 220 amp alternator over the, the stock 180. And with that it came with this uh, PA, what is it, power, HAPP, high, high amperage power point. And on it was a 250 amp terminal fuse. So I guess that's for uh, connecting high high amp stuff like winches and stuff. Anyway, pulled that off and I got myself a Blue C uh, bus fuse here, terminal fuse, and it's a 60 amp. So that's protecting all my wiring. And then I also have a 60 amp, let's see if we can look in there, a 60 amp breaker down there. So that way I can easily uh, turn things off if you know because this is the type of thing I may not use for months and months and when I need it I need it so most of the time I can just leave it off when I want it I can just open the hood and pop that on and then there's this heavy duty four gauge wire it goes down and I've uh, attached it along the same sort of routing that the tow cable wires went underneath the, the rig here and then popped it up there. For the ground return I did use the frame and it seems to operate okay. A lot of people say maybe you should run a separate uh, negative wire but so far everything seems to be working well. So I'm uh, trying to save money on wire. I probably could have gone t on the whole run to a two gauge or even a one gauge but so far this uh, four gauge seems to work well. I took a trip, uh, about a four hour trip, um, and no problems at all. The wire didn't get hot anywhere and none of the connections got hot. So let's give it an amperage test here. I'll turn on my lights here. The trailer light's on. There we go. And we're drawing around 50 amps out of the battery. And on the output side of the charger, we're looking at 40.1 amps coming out at that point. Just go to my combined here. Yeah, 51.4 amps. That's because we got a bit of solar energy. It's a little cloudy out right, right now, only about 10 amps of solar. But you can see if I'm driving down the road, I'm only getting 10, 11 amps of solar with that charger I'm banging in another 40 amps which can make a huge difference when you're uh, traveling from campsite to campsite arrive with nice full batteries. Do a final check here using my new Wi-Fi module for my trimetric battery monitor. So right now you can see the amps I'm putting in. Got some solar power coming in, not too much. So I'm going to turn on lights here and it should fire up the DC to DC charger and we should see that uh, B1 amps go up. There we go it's starting to rise. This thing updates every I think five seconds this uh, app. There we go so we're putting in 51 amps with only around like I say, around 12 amps of uh, solar power coming in on this cloudy day we have here in the desert. So I'll continue to test this and of course I'll come back with an update um, in the future. I think what I might try is, uh, you know, I could also even run my generator at the same time I'm running the truck 
and the solar. So next time I have a big solar day and I'm putting in max 30 amps, I'll crank this on and also crank my generator on, which puts in about 50 something amps, and we'll see what the total amperage I can slam into those lithium batteries if I needed to. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.